As a fourth year medical student, Aisha knows that vac- vaccination are both safe and essential. Getting one, however, is still an ordeal for her, for her who has needle phobia. She describes her uh, you know journey as that she gets clammy, she gets cold sweat. And then she passes. Aisha has been living with trypanophobia or the fear of getting injections for years. Like Aisha, there are other people around the globe who suffer from several phobias. Phobias is actually the number one psychiatric challenges across the world. Welcome to the latest episode of Wake Up to Health Talks. We have with us today Dr. Abhishek Singh Chauhan, a renowned, renowned psychiatrist from Kaan- Kanpur to shed some more light on phobias. Welcome Dr. Chauhan. Thank you. Thank you Purva. So, sir, uh, <clears throat> I you know before we kick off this conversation, I just wanted to understand what is the difference between an actual fear and a phobia. Are these two different things? Yeah, I think uh, Purva this is a most pertinent question to start this conversation with. So, uh, let me tell you the definition of phobia then uh, this answer might be there in it only. So, phobia is a irrational persistent fear of an object, situation or an activity leading to its avoidance. Right. Mm-hmm. So, there are two three keywords in it, irrational. The fear has to be irrational that it cannot be justified by most other people in the society. Number two, it should be persistent that every time you encounter with that situation, object or that activity, you develop that fear. And finally, the third thing is that it start disrupting your socio-occupational life. That it, it might start affecting your social life. It might start affecting your occupational life. You are unable to perform work you know, because of that uh, fear. So basically, when a fear is associated with these three things, we call it phobia. That is irrationality, mm-hmm. uh, persistency, and the socio-occupational dysfunction. As you already mentioned it, that phobia is... Uh, is one of the most leading challenges in psychiatric world. And at any point of time, 10% population of uh, United States of America is suffering from it, if I'm not wrong. That's a, that's a big chunk, you know, 10% of, uh, you know, the um, USA's population suffers from, uh, you know, such a pro- problematic disease. It's, it's a huge, uh, this thing. And people actually don't have awareness about it. We generally just term it as that I'm fearful of needles. I just don't like injections, for example. But uh, it can actually be, be phobia and people don't, you know, give much relevant info, uh, information about it. So, sir, um, can anyone suffer from it? Uh, I mean, can I suffer from it? Or, you know, can uh, are there any specific target audience, target groups that suffers from it? What, how do you decide? Okay. So, uh, Purva, let me tell you a very small story. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was uh, there was this, this story is about of little Albert. Little Albert is the name of the boy who is an 11-month-old on whom this experiment was conducted by Mr. John Watson, was a researchist and he was a scientist. Mm-hmm. What he did was whenever that child was used to play on his bed, he used to put a white rat on his bed. Mm-hmm. And when that rat used to run around his around him to that child, he would get excited, he used to catch, try to catch him, try mm-hmm. and all those stuff. Then what he then then what he did, he started whenever he put that rat on his bed, he would blow a large, uh, you know, very thunderbolt like sound from behind. That makes that child scared. So now what he is doing, every time he's putting that rat on the bed, he's blowing that sound. Mm -hmm. And that made child scared. After one month of this continuous link up between the rat and that sound, Mm-hmm. What that person, that Watson scientist did, he removed that sound. But now that white rat itself started bringing that scariness of fearfulness to that child, which wasn't there initially mm-hmm. when the child, when he was first a child. So what happened when that child has grown up, uh, became an adult, he was so scared. He was phobic of all the white things. He was fearful of white dogs. He was fearful of white rat. He was fearful of white goat, every other white animals. So what I'm trying to say here, Mm -hmm. for every phobia, if not all, you, the traces of it can be traced back in the childhood and the upbringing of that person. Uh, You might face that environmental stressor like a person who has, who has underwent humiliation, 
criticism or embarrassment in a social surrounding he might be suffering from social phobia a mm-hmm. person who has been brought up by an brought up by an family where the abusive parents are there where there's an con- con- continuously conflicts between the husband and the wife and there's a separation from the of the child from the parent these all stresses might lead to some or the other phobia so uh, this is one aspect of phobia that most of the phobias can be easily traced back in the childhood second theory says that uh, there is a genetic link up specifically there is a phobia known as agoraphobia which we'll discuss later in the talk mm-hmm. uh, where the genetic aspect comes into place where it is been found that it's been running in the family father or mother had that now the child has it now may maybe his sibling or his uh, next generation might have this so these uh, this has been found thirdly uh, some obviously biological uh, uh, aspect has been found that the particular area of the brain we call it limbic system mm-hmm. uh, which is associated with anxiety and the fear so this a uh, lot of studies have found that this area of the brain is somehow not normal in cases of persons suffering from phobia so these are the various uh, i may say the theories about the cause of the phobia or the person who might be suffering from it I, and uh, and yeah just I, sorry I, to interrupt you uh, yeah and uh, even i would like to take this liberty to make this statement umbrella similar most of the psychiatric disorder if not all their roots can be traced in the childhood or the upbringing and this statement of mind is not over statement i would say that's a that's actually a very pertinent fact to this conversation that uh, you know every phobia that you encounter can actually have some traces and you know uh, with the help of the doctor it's important to i uh, to you know identify it to actually get ahead of that so sir uh, you know as i said there's a lot of confusion between fear and phobia are there any symptoms that you should look out for to understand that it's it might not just be fear and it can actually be a psychiatric uh, disorder that you might be going yes uh, of course so the uh, i would like to dis- uh, describe into two things the first is the thought process at the le- symptoms at the thought level so a person who is having a phobia and not fear will have persistent thought going into his mind of avoidance he will mm-hmm. keep on try to avoid that situation he will mm-hmm. make excuses he will make some or the other reasons but the basic reason is that he just want don't want to face that situation object or activity which is is fearful mm-hmm. this doesn't generally the case with a person who is who is just have a fear not phobia so a phobic person will always have this back of the mind and he'll keep a try to avoid that situation mm-hmm. now this is this happens when he is not facing it much less uh, say for example that situation comes in in front of him or her then uh, then certain anxiety symptoms that comes into where the person will start trembling restlessness breathlessness palpitations heartbeat starts uh, choking sensation dryness of mouth numbness sun pad jati hai ungliyan thandi pad jate hain haath pair bilkul thande pad jana chakkar aana dizziness so these are the symptoms whenever the person start facing that uh, when faces his or her fear or the phobic thing so basically these are the two important i think the symptoms which the person fears and if the severity is more or high then there are chances of panic disorder as such panic attacks a lot of people had panic attacks this won't happen with a fear whenever a person is having a phobia he might have panic attack as well so there are actually physical symptoms associated with phobia yes yeah and, yeah, know, yeah. Uh, yeah if it continuously keeps on happening you should not avoid it i think that's the yes message. yes and okay. uh, you know in your years of practice are there any unique phobias that you have uh, you know come across and what led to that can you discuss something about that yeah uh, so so generally in uh, psychiatry we classify phobias basically into three categories right mm-hmm. so and the the first category the one is that we call it social phobia which is more prevalent although the new name of it is social anxiety disorder but it's okay. the same thing that it's the social phobia mm-hmm. it's a fear of um, fear of embarrassment in a social setting this leads to that person stop going to marriages stop going to parties stop going to any place where there are people whom he will be encountering with is known to him generally happens so that's a fear of 
the second most pertinent i would like to discuss and this is that is agoraphobia which i have mm-hmm. used this name before as well this is one of the most debilitating most uh, severe form of phobia and is one of the most dangerous phobias i would like to say uh, before i tell you about this phobia let me tell you a small uh, a movie came in 2016 by the name of phobia itself mm-hmm. uh, it was a it was a movie where the radhika apte was the yes. star mm-hmm. yeah so this movie was says a sm- first of the movie was that this uh, uh, radhika apte was was got molested in a cab mm-hmm. and post this molestation she developed this phobia and that she could not never come out of his house she was completely housebound because every time she used to step step out of his her house she all her fear would start dancing in front of her eyes she would have keep fearing that that same situation might occur again mm-hmm. so so basically agoraphobia is a phobia where the person has a fear of situations or places from where the escape is difficult uh, just mm-hmm. most commonly the escape is like patient uh, patient don't go out alone from the house they they fear of parking lots big malls so f- or the public transport from the any place from where they feel that they if they want to go out they won't be able to do it so mm-hmm. any particular situation from where the escape is difficult that is the it's all about agoraphobia this is a most severe and debilitating form i have said because it 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 usually disrupts the whole life of the person it mm-hmm. person stops going office stop going out his life mm-hmm. becomes completely housebound so this is one of those kind and the third and the last category we have discussed to the third is the specific phobias Mm-hmm. that which is which is commonly used among our among our society like for example uh, claustrophobia fear That's of true. closed spaces then acrophobia fear of height uh, then there is something or allerophobia phobia of cat cyno of dog pyro mm-hmm. of fire and a number of phobias yeah. are there Mm-hmm. so a lot of movies have also been made if you want to see that the and basically in hollywood like there is a very good movie uh, the the descent okay. uh, and then there is one buried so mm-hmm. these two movies are based on this uh, uh, claustrophobia mm-hmm. and re- recently you have seen that movie where it came into limelight because of this corona the contagion okay. contagion is a fear yeah the contagion is on the base of that uh, germophobia fear of small mm-hmm. germ bacteria and all those mm-hmm. so these are the various phobias there are n number we can't <laughs> reciting are, them exactly. all over here. there are multiple numbers of phobias and you know uh, i think uh, uh it, it you just need to analyze if you have any physical symptoms and you should consult a doctor and uh, you know before we close this um, this is a question that we, for any healthcare topic is very relevant that what are the treatment options available for uh, you know a treatment of phobia right so purva this is very good uh, i mean but say that's the most important question what mm-hmm. we can do about it right so my uh, the basic principle of all kinds of phobia the basic principle of treatment for all phobias remain one that mm-hmm. is jisse bhay hai jisse bhay hai use zarur kare mm-hmm. right self self exposure to the scared situation is the best remedy and the most important uh, uh step so uh do one thing daily which scares you that's we we say to our patient that do one thing daily even mm-hmm. for 2 minutes what scares you that's all because uh yes <clears throat> i told you a story of little albert yeah where that child got uh, uh developed that fear from where white thing similarly we can decondition this is called classical conditioning so mm-hmm. person who's got condition with something a fear we can decondition him and that's the uh, uh, procedure we call it systematic desensitization this is a, one of the treatment modalities what we do in it we create an hierarchy uh, let me explain you with an example take a person who is suffering from claustrophobia mm-hmm. uh, he lives or he lives on a building which is of 20th floor and he his flat is at the 20th floor mm-hmm. he will go he will go up uh, through the stairs 20 floor daily and come down because he has a fear of claustrophobia 
Mm-hmm. He will not go into the lift elevator. He won't use it. Mm-hmm. So what we do this systemic desensitization. We create a hierarchy where the at the lowest is the con- situation where the person is least scared or least frightened, and the topmost is the is the place where person is the most anxiety producing or the most uh, scaring. So I think if we create a hierarchy, then the person. Putting in a person into the uh, into the elevator and sending him alone on the floor that was the most careful situation, I guess, for him. And just and just sitting in a room and imagining a position that person is inside a elevator. He he is not there physically, just imagining mm-hmm. it. So that is the most careful. So we just construct this hierarchy and we make person go one by step by step by step to each and unless that particular. Hierarchy level is patient crosses without any anxiety. When that particular situation doesn't produce any anxiety or fear, then we can say that we can move ahead. So this is one of the method. There are multiple other methods are there. Flooding is there. Visual creativity is there. Other things. Uh, as far as medicines role is concerned, I would say that role of medicines in phobia is secondary, not primary. Primary is I already told you. Secondary is there when the severity becomes very high, then we use certain medications to reduce the anxiety and reduce certain phobias. Mm-hmm. So, so this is uh, what we do mostly in cases of phobia, and uh, it's a it's a it's a long treatment modality. We have to take patients. Hard to have patients enough. Doctor should have patients to make the patient go all through. It can't be done in a day or two. Or yes. with a single pill, so it's a tedious job. But uh, uh, what I hear is that uh, it is treatable, and you know, uh, people should not uh, even if they get detected of phobia, but they should not think that they just have to live with this forever. You know, if you consult a psychiatrist and if you talk to your doctor, you know, there is some um, solution that can come for it, and you can actually uh, start living with that fear. Yes, of course. Uh, this is the. Uh, Apurva, this is the point because a lot of uh, I must say that stigmatization is there along with exactly. the psychiatrist associated with it. People either they don't go to a psychiatrist thinking that am I or got mad or why should I mm-hmm. visit a psychiatrist, or they think that uh, this is a, this is a something fear I'm having and they, I have to live with it. I cannot overcome it, right? And the biggest problem is that that avoidance avoidance leads to further. The most strong fearfulness of that situation. You have to face it. You cannot run away. No, no, so no. that's the thing. Yeah. So you that is the problem with it. So I just the only my message to the audience will be that that I said, "Jisse bhay hai, usse zarur karein." Usse zarur karein. I think. I think uh, that is the key takeaway for today's session. That you know, do not avoid your fears and actually face them. And uh, you know, it is completely treatable, and you can get ahead of it. Thank you, Dr. Jahan, for joining us today, and it has been an insightful session. And uh, yeah, thank you, viewers, for joining us today, and we will see you in the next episode. Thank you, Purva.